Welcome to Microsoft 365 Excel, The Complete Story. And in video number 20, we're continuing with some projects. Last couple projects were data analysis projects. And in this video, we want to see how to build a worksheet model for a common question. How much will my bank CD earn? Now, as we learned earlier in the class, when you're building a worksheet model, you put all the inputs into the cell, label them, and build your model. That way, when we come back later and change an input, hey, I want to look at the value of my CD in one year. Bam, there it is. We also want to talk about the math behind compound interest. Now, here's our task at hand. BECU Bank offers a two-year CD with an APR of 4% compounded monthly. And we want to build a schedule that shows the interest we will earn if 16,000 bucks is invested. Now, anytime we build a worksheet model like this, as we learned earlier in the class, we have to follow Excel's golden rule. Now, over here on the answer sheet, I repeated the notes from MEX video number two. Because of course, building Excel models, the key is always to follow Excel's golden rule. And that is, if your solution input can change, put it in a cell, label it, and refer to it with a cell reference or table reference. So back over here. We need to read this, extract the inputs we're going to use, label them, list them, build our solution. Now I went ahead and listed some labels, added some formatting. And the first number we want is this 16,000. And it's often called a lump sum invested amount. Because we drop it in the bank, wait for interest to accumulate, to grow to some future value amount. That's why sometimes it's also called PV, or the present value. When we put it into the account before it grows into a future value, the present value is 16,000. APR stands for annual percentage rate. That's the legally required rate that a bank would list. We have two years, so we'll put two years. And periods per year is not directly listed here as a number, but luckily, 4% is compounded monthly. What that means is that each month, they'll calculate the interest, put it into the account. And next month, when they go to calculate next month interest, they use the accumulated amount, original amount plus all accumulated interest. So monthly means they're going to do this 12 times in a year. Now, these are the only four inputs we're going to have into this big model here. We're going to have some initial calculated amounts, and then we'll build a schedule that shows what happens each month. Now, the first calculation we're going to need to make is total periods. And that's just, hey, we're doing this for two years times the periods per year. Enter. So we're going to have 24 lines in our schedule. And very importantly, period rate. Well, they're definitely not going to give us 4% each month. They're going to take that 4% and divide it by 12. That's called the period rate. So equals, there's our 4% divided by our number of periods per year. And we get less than 1%. So 3 and 1 third tenths of a percent. Now what's important about this number is every single month, whether it's the beginning amount or any of the accumulated amounts later, We'll take whatever the amount from the previous month was, and we'll always use period rate to calculate the new interest amount for each month. Now, I went ahead and created the top part of our schedule. We're going to have three columns. We need to know what period is. 0, that's when we put it into the account. And then 24 subsequent periods where we earn interest. We need to know what the interest paid is. There's no interest when we first put the money in the bank. And then we're going to have a column for balance. Now balance, I'm just doing a formula, equals the initial amount. And here's the whole crux, not only of compound interest for an investment like a CD, but also for home loans. Whatever the balance is, 
from the previous period. When we go to calculate interest, we take period interest rate times balance, and that gives us the current interest paid. And we're going to do the first couple of steps manually. Then we'll complete this schedule, and then I'll show you some really cool formula tricks to make it dynamic spilled array awesome. So hey, whatever the previous balance was times the period rate. And so when I hit Enter, whoa, 53 bucks and 33 cents. That makes the balance. Hey, I'm going to take the balance from the previous period plus the interest they just put into the account. So there it is, 16,053 and 33 cents. Now the next step explains the power of compound interest. Because when I calculate this interest, I'm not going back to the original amount. Guess what? I get to use a bigger amount. That's right, it has $53 more. So when we multiply it by this, this interest will be a little bit bigger. So equals always the previous balance times always the period rate. When I hit Tab, well, it doesn't seem that much more. It's about 20 cents more. But now I get to do what is awesome. We take the previous balance, which already has some accumulated interest, and we're going to add the interest. And there it is. We're already up to 106 bucks more than the original amount. So now when I say, hey, previous balance times period rate, I love it. Now I get, instead of 51 cents, 68. Previous balance plus the interest paid for this period. And at the end of three periods, I'm already up to 16,160 and 54 cents. Now I'm going to delete these. F2, what do I need to do since I'm manually making this? I'm not spilling the results. Well, that cell reference right there is always one up and one over. So it's a relative cell reference. But this one, I got to hit the F4 key to lock it because I got to use the period rate every single time. Tab, F2, what about that? It's perfect. Relative reference looking one above at the previous balance plus the interest that the bank just gave me. Now watch this. I'm going to copy it down manually, click and drag. And since I want to increment these two, two and three is highlighted. So that'll create a pattern, two, three, four, five. And these formulas will work. Copy it all the way down. I did one too many. I did one too many. So home, that clear button and clear all or Alt-EAA. And there's the total balance at the end of 24 periods, 17,330 bucks and 29 cents. Now, I want to examine this a little bit closer. And I'm going to use a simplified example. And I want to jump over to the PDF notes. Because what I would like is, yes, this is beautiful for a CD like this and for consumer loans like mortgages because you get to see what's happening every single period. But oftentimes, you just want to know what the final amount is. So we're going to go over to the PDF notes, look at the math behind it, and then we'll see if we can create a single formula to go from present value all the way down to future value. All right, so we'll do an easy example. The principal or present value is 100 bucks. We're going to do APR 4%, and we're going to do periods per year 4. That would be like getting interest quarterly. That makes the period rate easy, 4% divided by 4. So every quarter, you get 1%. Here's our schedule, but we did it with math formulas instead of Excel formulas. Time 0, we get 100 bucks. We're going to calculate the interest whatever there is from the previous period times the period rate, so we get 1. We add those together, we get the new balance. We use that down here. We still got to use the period rate. There's the interest. Add them together, new balance. Using the new balance each time until we get the end of four periods. Now I want you to notice something. 100 plus 1, that means whatever the previous balance was, plus the interest we just calculated. Well, guess what? That 1, that's 100 times 0.01, the period rate. So if I substitute that in right there, 
Then on the next page, here's where we create our formula to calculate the NCD value, or really the N value for every lump sum present value amount to get to future value amount. Well, guess what? We can notice a pattern. There is a plus symbol, and there's multiplication on both sides. Well, wait a second. There's no multiplication here. Well, really there is. Because if we take 1 times the present value amount, that initial investment, well, it's equal to the initial investment. So there it is, a plus with multiplication on either side, a common factor. That means we can factor out. So on the outside of the parentheses, we get the 100. That was common to both. What's left? 1 plus the period rate. So if we do this calculation, we get exactly 101 bucks. Well, if this is equal to 101 bucks, when we're supposed to take the 101 bucks and use it in the next period, 101 plus 101 times the period rate, well, guess what? I'm just substituting this in. Bam, bam. Well, now we have a plus symbol with multiplication on either side and a full common factor. There it is. So we factor both of these out. There it is right there, times, well, what's left? 1 plus the period rate. Now you see the pattern starting to emerge. We have 1 plus the period rate, and it's 2 times because this is period 2. If we continue this, remember, this is the full amount from the previous period. So we just use it here, plus that previous amount times the period rate. Well, now we have this common factor. We factor it out. We're left with this. So if you follow the logic to the end of the fourth period, it's just 1 plus the period rate listed how many times? Whatever period it is. So here's the simplified formula. Present value times 1 plus the period rate raised to whatever the number of periods are. It's listed here kind of messily. And it's listed up here also. Now over here, I want to hide some rows. So I'm selecting the row headers in the Excel worksheet. Highlight everything down to 23. Right click Hide. Now let's try our formula for future value. We have a present value times. And in parentheses, we're going to hard code 1 in, because that represents the original principle. Plus, well, there's a variable period rate close, caret, and we have 24 total periods. And when I Control Enter, look at that. We didn't have to do all these steps. We got straight to the amount that we will withdraw at the end of the 24 months. Now, in the United States, we have a law that says banks have to show you APR. But guess what? For an investment like this, you're actually earning more than the APR due to compound interest. And if you calculate what's called an effective rate, that tells you the average compounding rate. And if there's more than one period per year, it'll be bigger than this 4%. So to calculate that, we say in parentheses 1 plus the period rate, close, and we raise it to the exponent 12. Now, when I Control Enter, that gives me 1 plus the effective rate, F2. If you subtract 1, Control Enter, that's the actual average compounding rate that you earn. And it's always going to be bigger than APR if the number of periods per year are greater than 1. To illustrate how this is the average compounding rate, if we want to calculate the first year ending balance, well, we take the principal, that's the original amount at times 0, times 1 plus, and we just do our average compounding rate. And that gives us the amount at the end of year one. And we could check that, which we will in a second. If we wanted to go straight to the ending balance, present value times, in parentheses, 1 plus average compounding, that's the rate for a single year. Well, since there's only two years, we can caret 2. And that gives us exactly the same number. If I unhide. Unhide. There's that 16,651 at the end of one year, exactly what we get here. Now, 
this is longhand, and we got to talk about some of the math behind it. But let's see how to do this with dynamic spilled array formulas. The first thing we want to do is we want to add dynamic formatting. So I'm going to highlight whatever number of rows I think might be the most that we'd ever get. I highlight down to 482 and go up to Home, Conditional Formatting, Highlight Cell Rules, More Rules. And from the drop down, I'm going to select No Blanks. Format, under Fill, I'm going to add our green. Border, we actually saw how to do this back in video number 10. Click OK. And in the top cell, we're going to use Sequence to spill 0 to whatever the final number of rows are. 24 plus 1, comma, comma, because we're starting at 0. Tab, we can scroll down and see that works. If I change this to 1, just like that, it is working. Now the balance, we're going to use our formula equals, well, there's the principal, the original amount, times 1 plus the period rate, close, and here's where we caret. We need each one of these, so I select the whole range. It puts the spilled range operator in. And when I Control Enter, those are all of the balances. And then to calculate interest paid, well, here's the problem. This is a dynamic spilled array. So if I pound here, I'm always going to get the entire range. And that's not what I want. For interest paid, I always want the end amount minus the begin amount. This is the perfect job for the amazing drop dynamic array function. Well, there's the array, pound, because I always want to refer to everything. And for the ending amounts, comma, I need to drop the top row. So I'm dropping 1, Enter, and there are the ending amounts. But now F2, I'm going to subtract, drop the same full array, comma, but now I do minus 1 because I want to drop the last one. So for that first calculation, I'll get second period amount minus 16,000. And that's our formula, totally dynamic. 0.5 is six months, two, and it is working dynamically like a charm. All right, that was a little fun with what is my CD worth? We learned a little bit about finance math. We also emphasized building models with Excel's golden rule. And guess what? There's no homework problem because you just go look at your bank, see what it offers, and build a model. All right, we'll see you next MEX video where guess what? We're going to do the other side of this. We're going to do a home mortgage loan and build a very similar schedule using the same math. All right, we'll see you next MEX video.